Well, hello everyone. This is Quarter Triangle Mouse, and today I'm doing a strategy guide about great people. So I asked in my previous strategy videos, what do you guys want to see here? And uh, in one of the comments, uh, someone suggested that I talk about great people, as I did a, a guide about wonders before. They wanted a guide about um, which great people to get, which great people to ignore. So I thought it was a good idea, and here we are. Um, just to clarify, I'm obviously not talking about great writers, artists, and musicians. They are all the same. I'm obviously not talking about great prophets. They are all the same for the game. And I'm also not going to talk about generals and admirals. Now, of course, they are not the same. Um, they get something different when you retire them. They all give you a more combat strength and more movement to each unit within two tiles, um, plus five, plus one movement, etc. But they all do something different when you retire them, which is usually uh, two, um, sorry, two eras bef after um, after you you get them because they, they become obsolete. So this guy, for example, gives me combat strength and, and movement uh, to classical and medieval era land units. So if uh, late game all of my units are at least Renaissance era units, this Sun Tzu guy um, is going to be useless. So I can retire him and get The Art of War by Sun Tzu. We all heard about this book, so it's a great work of writing. Uh, that's fine. If I retire Themistocles, uh, he will give me a, a Quadrium unit instantly. This is not very good, by the way. Anyway, um, as you can see, some of these retirement things are good, some are not so good. But anyway, you will always want your Great Admirals and Great Generals, especially for the combat bonus and the movement bonus. That is going to be your main thing um, in the game, uh, your main goal for getting these guys, when, especially when you're going for domination games, obviously. So, um, and this is always the same, okay? You get plus five and plus one to the two eras, uh, the, the era where uh, these guys are, are from, and the next era, and that's it. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this video talking about these guys. I'm going to talk all of this video about great engineers, great merchants, and great scientists. There is a, l a very, very big difference between good, great merchants, good, great engineers, good, great scientists, and the ones that are really, really, uh, are really small, really, like, obviously, they all help you a little bit, but, but some of them are very disappointing, like this one, for example. So, um, well, no, this one is not so disappointing, but some of them are, are very bad, and or very weak. I'm also not going to spend a lot of time talking about the classical era ones, because on high difficulties you probably won't be able to get any of them because the AI always starts stronger than you. It's going to take a while for you to build enough districts to catch up, and so probably you're going to get more great people starting mid-game and especially on the late game. So I'm going to spend more time on those ones. Um, so yeah, let's let's start with this stuff. Let's start talking about, let me think about this, great people, so no great admirals, let's let's close this, no great artists, obviously, let's talk about great engineers, okay, well, let's go in alphabetical order as usual. Ada Lovelace from the industrial era, so one charge, now keep in mind, by the way, uh, with the Mastodon and Persia DLC, you can get the mouse volume uh, and um, the mouse volume uh, was it was it Alicarnassus in this game? I think it's Alicarnassus. It's not the mausoleum of Mausolos as it was uh, in Civilization IV. So yeah, it's Alicarnassus in this game. Anyway, the mausoleum gives you one extra charge to the great engineers. So um, it can be a really interesting wonder, especially for scientific victories. I'm going to mention that a little bit more later. But other lovelace let's see still to build one more district than the population limit allows. Well, that's fine. I guess having one more districts is always good, but the thing is, uh, oh, and triggers Eureka for computers. Okay, Eureka for computers is also not too bad, especially like like if you're going for a, maybe a cultural victory. This is nice because getting computers early in a cultural victory uh, really really helps because it's a huge boost to tourism. So, but 
still it's just one Eureka, so it's not a, a big deal. And usually you should be able to get all of your cities to 10 population, which gives you, or maybe not all of your cities, but the, the vast majority of your cities should get to 10 population, which gets you four districts. You usually don't need more than four districts um, in, in any city to win the game. So this is not a big deal. <coughs> if you lose at a Lovelace, that's fine. Don't sweat over it. Alvar Alto. So, modern era, great engineer. Uh, the effect this city provides plus one appeal to any tile it owns. This is, of course, um, useful for cultural victories, uh, completely irrelevant for pretty much anything else. If you're not going for a cultural victory, you only want the appeal for neighborhoods, and you are not going to build a lot of neighborhoods. I hardly ever build more than one or two neighborhoods in a full game. So, so yeah, this is... Um, it's pretty weak. Even if you have the, don't have the plus one appeal, your neighborhoods can usually give you at least plus four housing with one neighborhood and you are not going to need more than that. So if you're not going for a cultural victory, this is completely irrelevant. And for a modern era, a great engineer, you, you should want more than this. So if you can skip Alvaralto uh, and then still, you know, you have enough time to get another great engineer later, uh, because the AI will get Alvaralto eventually. Okay, just do it. Just keep this guy and go for the next one. Because this is kind of crappy. Even if you're going for a cultural victory, this is not so great. Because if you're going for a cultural victory, you should get the, the Eiffel Tower. Okay, that I explained why in my video about wonders. If you're going for a cultural victory, you should get Eiffel Tower plus Cristo Redentor. That's a killer combo for cultural victories. And so you won't need this plus one appeal because you already get plus two appeal to every city from the Eiffel Tower. Bisheng, Medieval Era, great engineer. So Medieval Era, again, on Diri, this is difficult, okay, getting great people in Medieval Era. But maybe you can get one, or, or if you play on lower difficulty. So let's see city build one more district than the population limit allows. Again, the same stuff, plus Eureka for printing. As I said before, okay, this is, this is not a big deal. You usually get all the population you need. You, you can get, yeah, in the medieval era, that means it's a bit earlier, so maybe you can uh, increase your district um, limit a bit earlier than you normally would, but probably you're not going to have a lot of production anyway, so you're not going to get this extra district uh, very fast. So it's not a big deal. Uh, printing, yeah, you need two universities, I think, to, to boost printing, so it's not so easy to boost, especially if you're not going for a scientific victory. And it is a good technology when you're going for culture, Again, cultural victory, because it gives more tourism to, to great works. So yeah, this is not completely useless, but it's not awesome either. I, I would say this is average. Charles Correa, information era, great engineer. Plus two appeal. Okay, so we had plus one appeal. Now we have plus two appeal. <laughs> they didn't really uh, work a lot on this. They didn't really struggle thinking about original stuff to do here. It's just an improvement over this guy. Uh, as I said before, uh, not a big deal. And also, information era, by the time you get this guy, uh, you're already going to be about to win a cultural victory. So, and you don't want the plus two appeal if you're not going for a cultural victory. So this is, uh, this is very, very weak and probably it's going to be so late that if you skip it, you're not going to have enough time for the next great engineer. So, so if you get Charles Correa uh, on the list, this is just bad luck for you. I'm sorry, but that's just how it goes. Bruneski, Filippo Bruneski. Um, Renaissance, obviously, yeah. Uh, well, I don't know if you did, but uh, I studied this guy in history of art a lot, so. Um, grants 315 production towards wonder construction. That's nice, two charges, and you get more if you have the mausoleum. Uh, this is pretty nice. If we, you know you can uh, get the technology for a nice wonder and then use all of your charges there to make sure you don't lose it. Uh, this, if you if you use all of the charges on the same wonder, this might give you a wonder that you would normally not be able to build because the AI goes for it very fast, like like I don't know something like Petra or something like Chichen Itza if you have a lot of jungle. You know, one of those wonders that could be good but but it's very difficult to get if. Uh, if you're playing on high difficulties, this guy can get that wonder for you. So that's nice. That's nice. I, I like this this great engineer. Same thing here. Gustav Eiffel, obviously the builder of the Eiffel or the architect of the Eiffel Tower. 
480 production towards Wonder Construction, pretty nice, a little bit more production because he comes a little bit later. And again, this can give you a wonder that you need, you can get it guaranteed with this guy, and maybe a wonder you weren't counting on getting because the AI goes for it very fast. Maybe you can get it if you get this guy. So that's nice. I mean, industrial era, I don't know, I'm thinking maybe, maybe you can guarantee Big Ben or I don't know, something like that. Isidore of Miletus, medieval era great engineer, and you get 215 production towards Wonder Construction. Uh, same thing as before, getting extra production towards Wonders is nice. The earlier you get the boost to, towards co Wonder Construction, the more useful it is for the game. Uh, problem is, it's very hard to get a medieval era great person if you're playing on Diddy difficulty. The AI will probably get this one from you, which is a shame. Uh, but yeah, it's nice. James of St. George, medieval great engineer, instantly builds ancient and medieval walls in this city and provides enough gold per turn to pay their maintenance. So you basically get good walls for free in one city. Uh, <laughs> this is rubbish. You shouldn't uh, need this. Um, maybe in some borderline cities, uh, sorry, in some border cities and some cities next to the frontier, you are going to need some ancient walls here and there. Uh, I never build medieval wars, never, ever, ever. I just go for a civil engineer to get them to get mm, city defense automatically, and that's it. Uh, as I said, eventually, every now and then, in three or four cities that are right in the border, I build ancient walls um, just to make sure I don't get uh, surprised by an attack in the mid game or by barbarians or something like that. Uh, but they are not so expensive, so this is not a good deal. Uh, this is not such a big deal and the maintenance is also not so expensive, so this is very weak. Uh, I, I'm not interested in this in this great engineer. Instantly builds a factor, oh, James Watt, yeah. Industrial era instantly builds a factory in workshop in the district, plus factories provide plus two production, so this is a good part, okay? Getting a factory in workshop instantly, okay, that's nice. That's nice because if you know you're going to get this guy, you can plan ahead, uh, start building an industrial zone, and then when you get him, maybe if you are about to finish an industrial zone, you can wait a couple of turns to activate him and then go and get a workshop factory for free immediately. Okay, that's that's already nice. But getting all of your factories to produce, uh, to get plus two production, that's awesome because factories, um, if you plan properly their location, they can affect four cities, five cities. So they are very good. And with this guy on them, they are even better. So that's awesome. Also, also, I saw, I don't know if this is going to be patched, but right now I, I saw that someone did the test on a forum and if you have the mouse volume and you have two charges, this stuff uh, stacks. So all of your factories, instead of getting plus two production, are going to get plus four production. So that's super big. Like this guy with the mouse volume, that's amazing. Jane Drew, Atomic Era. Plus four housing, plus three amenities. So yeah, you can get a very big city with this with this uh, great engineer. Obviously, with the plus four housing, that city is not going to need a neighborhood or anything like that. And then plus three amenities to be able to sustain that large population. Um, the problem is in Civilization VI, cities with a very very large amount of population are not so valuable after as they were in uh, Civilization V. Even Civilization IV. I know that in C4 you wanted large empires, but the thing is in Civilization IV, the specialists were very, very strong. So if you could get a lot of specialists, uh, they could help you a lot. Uh, in Civ 6, the specialists are very, very weak. That's one of my main issues actually with this game. I think the specialists are too weak and that makes having a lot of population much less valuable than before because once you run out of tiles to work, you have to work specialists and they're not going to give you uh, so many good things. They're not they're simply not so strong. So yeah, that's why Jane Drew is not so good. She's not bad, she's, uh, I don't know, she's going to give you one large population, but she comes also very late, Atomic Era. So the city won't have a lot of time to grow, to really make use of this. So I could say she's a little bit below average. John Robling, same stuff as before, plus two housing, plus one amenity, a bit weaker than her, and she comes on, on the same era, Atomic Era, as you can see. So she, he has two charges, that's the difference. So she affects one city a lot, this guy affects two cities a little bit. Um, which one I prefer? I think I prefer this guy, because 
you won't have a lot of time to build, grow one city into a lot of population. And as I said before, one city with massive population is not so strong in Civ 6. Two cities with a mm, higher than average population is better. <coughs> so I prefer John Revling to Jane Drew. But he's still not awesome, okay? Jane is a little bit below average. This guy is, I guess, average. Joseph Paxton, Information Era. The district regional building reached three tiles far farther. And this is regional building provide uh, plus one amenity. So uh, this guy is for um, for uh, entertainment complexes. So let's say you have one entertainment complex with a zoo. Um, he's going to give you the zoo is going to give you plus one amenity, and it's going to reach nine tiles instead of six. So that's pretty good. That's that's pretty useful. He comes a little bit late in the game, but uh, if you're going for a domination victory, this is still going to be useful this late in the game. Uh, you're probably struggling with war weariness at that point, uh, so this will help you a lot, uh, especially if you plan accordingly and you pick the best entertainment complex for this. It, it might affect, uh, I don't know, like up to nine cities or some crazy stuff like that if you're lucky. So I like him. I like him especially if you am suffering with amenities, obviously, which tends to be the case late game on mid to late game on domination games. So especially good for that. Uh, if you're going for cultural games and you've been more or less peaceful during the game, maybe he's not so good, but he's still useful. Um, yeah, having a little bit more amenities can give you can get your series to happy instead of content, and that gives you some bonus. So that's nice. I could place this guy above average. Not one of the best great engineers, but really a good one. Leonardo da Vinci, Renaissance obviously. Workshops provide plus one. Culture triggers Eureka. Um, now, I didn't see any test regarding this. Uh, oh, sorry, it triggers Eureka from one random technology from the modern era. So if you have the mausoleum, he'll have two charges. That's two Eureka moments uh, for the modern era, which is nice. Uh, but the main thing is this, plus one culture per, per every workshop. If you are uh, having a lot of workshops and if you are getting a great engineer on the Renaissance, you, that means you probably already built a bunch of industrial zones. So you probably have a bunch of workshops already. Uh, so that can be, you know, if you have four workshops, that's plus four culture. If you have, let's say, eight workshops, that's plus eight culture, not bad at all. Um, Mid-game, eight culture can still be relevant. It, it might be something like a 10% increase or something like that, so that, that could be nice. Late game is not going to be much, but okay, for mid-game it can be a nice boost. Um, and what I'm really interested, I haven't seen a test with this guy, but if the other guys stack, I imagine that Leonardo da Vinci also stacks if you have the mausoleum. So workshops will give you plus two culture. That could be a really nice impact. I, as I said, I haven't seen any tests for this, but if you have the mausoleum, I imagine Leonardo can be pretty cool. Uh, <coughs> Renaissance era, Mimar Sinan. Uh, three visionary Ottoman sultans. Oh, okay, interesting, interesting. I, I wasn't so familiar with this guy. Um, anyway, unique ability, two charges, plus one housing, plus one amenity, okay. Same as before, right? Same as uh, these guys. Difference is these guys, Jane Drew, John Rubling, they, they come in the Atomic Era. And Mimar Sinan, he comes in the Renaissance. So you have much more time to grow your city. So the plus one housing, yeah, it's not a lot of housing, but it's, it's, uh, it's relevant if you don't want to waste your time building, you know, neighborhoods and so on. It's relevant having plus one housing and plus one amenity to, to support that population. That's nice. And two charges by default, which can go up if you have the mausoleum. I think he's nicer than the other two. I will place this guy a little bit above average simply because he comes earlier. That means you will have time to grow your cities. Uh, not a lot, but I, as I said, um, a few cities with 10 or 13 population um, are better than one city with 20. Okay, so, so this is a bit nicer than the other two. Not great, but a bit nicer than the other guys that give you housing amenities simply because he comes earlier. Nikola Tesla. Okay, modern era. This original building reached tile three times farther and they produce plus two production. So the same thing as uh, this guy, but instead of entertainment complex, 
With Tesla, we are talking about industrial zones. So you will have one industrial zone that reaches nine tiles instead of six with the area of effect buildings. And also those area of effect buildings will provide plus two production. So the factory and later on the uh, power plant. This guy is super good if you're going for um, space victory because plus two production for the factory and another plus two production from the power plant is going to be very useful and if it reaches nine tiles that means he could be affecting all of your cities with spaceports which are usually going to be no more than three you don't need more than three cities with spaceports by the way to win a scientific victory so so he might be reaching all of them uh, it can be even better obviously with the mausoleum you have two charges so two cities with with nine tiles of area of effect that could be all of your empire being affected by this guy so that's pretty awesome or or maybe you want to put him uh, twice in uh, the same district uh, and then you're only going to get uh, sorry this this stuff also stacks apparently someone did the test and this stuff also stacks so that district is going to reach six tiles further that's 12 tiles in total that is huge and you're going to get plus four production from that factory and from that power plant. Uh, so again, if you're going for a space victory, that can be super, super strong. It can affect all of your series building space parts, and, and that's awesome. So yeah, this guy with the mausoleum, uh, it's, it's just super good for the, um, for the scientific victory. Robert Goddard, another good engineer for the scientific victory plus 20 percent production the worst place race projects very good because these projects are very expensive so he can save you a bunch of turns uh, by the end of the game this guy could be saving you something like 10 turns or something like that which on dd is pretty relevant so you want this guy if you see him on the list try to get him don't trust on it remember on dd the ai can purchase guys all the time so purchase him if you need to with money or with face points or whatever you have uh, because he's pretty good and triggers Eureka for rocketry again this is also pretty good for the scientific victory Korolev another good great guy for the space uh, victory 1500 production towards space based project construction you can get two charges if you have uh, the mausoleum now the two first parts which are the, the satellite and the moon landing they cost this they cost 1500 uh, on daily difficulty so I think it's the same on every difficulty actually on standard speed sorry on, on other speeds obviously it changes but on standard speed this is the cost of moon landing and uh, satellites which means if you have the mausoleum and you get this guy to teach two charges you can get satellite in one turn and then moon landing in one turn again which is pretty awesome that's that saves you a lot of time then you can start with the Mars parts much faster um, because you need those two first things you need the satellite and the moon landing to start building the, spa uh, the Mars parts so uh, this is pretty huge if you are going for a scientific victory especially if you have the mausoleum it can be a huge save so you can see that we have a lot of great engineers that are great for scientific victories and and the mausoleum makes them even stronger so that is why if you want have sorry if you are going for scientific victory apart from building a lot of campus districts you ha want to build a lot of industrial zones to get this good late game great engineers okay you want these guys so don't neglect your industrial zones if you're going for scientific victories and finally von braun from the information era plus 100 percent production towards space race project this is just i mean i told you godard was good with 20 percent plus eureka to rocketry this guy 100 percent that is just awesome I got this guy on, on one of my DD science wins and man did he save me time. I mean, that, that was just ridiculous. He saved me so, so much time. I was doing the Mars parts in like five turns or something like that. It was ridiculous. Obviously those cities had a lot of production. I, was, I had plan ahead. They had very strong industrial zones. Uh, uh, late game I even built uh, encampments just to get the, the buildings that get you even more production. So those cities had a lot of production per se but then I got this guy on top of that and, and that was just a laughing matter how fast I got those Mars parts that was just ridiculous and I haven't tested this guy with the mausoleum so I don't know if this stuff stacks 
But if this stacks and you get mm, another plus 100 percent, I mean, it's, it's it's going to be to your base production. No, so no 100 on top of 100. I think it's probably like that. But still, it's still awesome. It, it would be just ridiculous. So yeah, another great, uh, another awesome great engineer for scientific victory. So as you can see, great engineers are particularly strong for scientific victories in general. Okay, let's go to the next point, great merchants. Adam Smith, industrial era, plus one economic policy slot. This is great, this is great, guys. If you can get Adam Smith and, and uh, if he appears in your game, you probably should be able to get him because by the time this industrial era appears, uh, you should already have a few commercial hubs uh, or maybe several of them if you've been lucky with your early game. And the thing is, the AI, even on Diddy, they don't build a lot of commercial hubs, especially if Congo is not in the game. Obviously, Congo always gets better at this stuff because they don't build holy sites, so they have more room for other districts and they are more likely to get um, commercial hubs, so they are more likely to get great merchants. But if Congo is not in the game, you are very likely to be getting um, great merchants by the time the industrial era hits, even on Diddy. So try to get this. Do yourself a favor and try to get this this guy. This is basically the same stuff that Big Ben gives you. And I, uh, well, minus the double goal, but that is not the main thing. The main thing about Big Ben is this. I already told you that Big Ben is one of the top five wonders, so this guy is obviously one of the top great people in the game. Plus one economics policy slot is awesome, and every time you see him, try to get him, prioritize him, purchase him if you need to, because he's awesome. Coleus. That's one free copy of the luxury resource on this style to your capital city and 100 face. So this is classical era. You're probably not going to get this guy on Diddy. Uh, if you do get him, okay, yeah, you can send him anywhere in the map and you get one free copy of the luxury. So if it's a luxury that is not in your land, you suddenly get it for the for the whole game. So that's nice, getting one extra luxury. 100 face is pretty relevant. Uh, but yeah, on Diddy, you're not going to get him on other difficulties one looks is probably not so big anyway. Estelle Other grants two perfume and nuclear manufacturer luxury resource which provides plus six amenities. This is more amenities than a normal luxury will give you so that's why she's not bad. If you are going for domination victories um, you are going to want this. As you can see, she's better than Colaius simply because here, well, first of all, this guy needs to travel all the way to get one one luxury that you don't have already. Uh, and if you eventually expand and you get a copy of that luxury, then this guy uh, becomes obsolete, basically becomes irrelevant. Mm -hmm. But with Estelle Other, you get perfume, which you could not get other way. There is no other way to get perfume in the game, only through her. And you get two copies, so you can always sell another one and get them some extra money. And they give you more amenities. So overall, she's way better than Colaeus for this reason. And if you are going for a domination victory, uh, probably in the late game you are struggling with, with the war weariness, so she can be pretty useful. I recommend her. Don't, don't go crazy, she's not, uh, let's say, Adam Smith kind of good, but she's pretty good, above average for sure. Giovanni de' Medici, Renaissance era, builds a bank and market in this district and the bank gets two great work slots which can hold anything. Okay, so, uh, if you're going for a cultural victory, having great work slots that can hold anything is nice because you might get uh, great musicians before you get broadcast towers because the broadcast towers come very late in the game and they are pretty expensive to build uh, so for me at least it happens i always end up getting my first great musician before i get any broadcast towers and I don't always build Broadway either, so I end up not having enough lots for my great works of music. So this is nice. You can use these lots, obviously, for works of music, nothing else, because if you're going for um, cultural victory, you are definitely going to have uh, great, write, uh, great works of writing slots and great works of art slots. So it's only about the great works of music that, that uh, makes this great person a little bit better than it would be otherwise. Um, if you're not going for a cultural victory, uh, I think this is average. I mean, one free market and bank, okay, fine. But these two buildings are not so expensive anyway. So not a big deal. Uh, I wouldn't sweat, him, sweat over him, sorry. Uh, if, um, 
even if you're going for a cultural victory, actually, it's not so important. You are eventually going to get those broadcast towers, uh, or you might get Bolshoi Theater or Broadway or something like that. So it's not such a big deal, but it's uh, a little bit more useful. I would say average if you're going for cultural victory, below average if you're going for anything else. Rubinstein, plus four amenities, so not as good as Estee Lauder. As you can see, still you get a luxury that it's I is impossible to get otherwise, so they are still better than Cola Eus for this reason. This is a luxury that nobody can get otherwise, only through this great merchant, Atomic Era. As I said before, you will want another luxury late game if you're going for domination, and you have one extra that you can sell for some extra money, which is always nice. Not as good as Estee Lauder, but still a, a more than decent um, great person. Irene of Athens, Medieval Era, grants one free copy of the Luxury Resort on this style to your capital city. So same of call I use. You can see the first sentence is the same, but the second sentence. Here we had 100 faith, which I already said is pretty much irrelevant. Here we have increases trailer capacity by one. This is way better than having 100 faith. Okay, 100 faith is pretty much nothing. One extra trade route is great. Um, trade routes are everything in Civ 6. Trade routes can be production, can be food, can be money. They can be everything. If you have other cards that give you more bonuses, they can be culture, they can be um, even faith, depending on where you send them. So they can be anything you want. Trade routes for any type of victory, more trade routes is always a good thing. So that makes Irene of Athens way better than Colaeus. Again, the problem is medieval era. Um, it's very difficult to get great people on Didi in the medieval era. Even a great merchant, uh, it's going to be hard. If you had a very, very good gr early game and you managed to get your commercial hubs up very early, maybe you can get her, but it's going to be unlikely on Didi. On lower difficulties, go for her. Uh, this, is, this is pretty good. Jacob Fugger, or Fugger, or uh, I don't know, Fugger, I think it is. Jacob Fugger, I never remember how to pronounce the name of this guy. Um, Renaissance era, and he ga you have one charge, 200 gold, two envoys. Okay, 200 gold is not a lot. It's very little, but at this point it might be relevant. Maybe at this point you are, I don't know, upgrading your chariots into knights, and this is one extra upgrade, so that's nice, I guess. Not great. Two envoys is very nice. Two envoys is, is yeah, you always want to have another couple of envoys, right? Why not? And if, um, yeah, no, that's it. It's only one charge. Uh, great merchants are not, I, I was going to say mausoleum, but no. Great merchants are not affected by the mausoleum, so it's always just 200 gold and two envoys. It's nice, it's uh, not awesome. Um, two envoys, as I said, it's nice. It's, just not incredibly strong. I mean, if you have very good city-states on the mid-game, like very good city-states in your continent, then you can still fight to be a suzerain of, like, uh, let's say Toronto is in, in your continent, or, you know, Buenos Aires, or one of these, uh, or Hong Kong. I don't know if Hong Kong was so good. I think Hong Kong was good, but especially Buenos Aires or Toronto. If you have one of those in your continent, then these two envoys are going to be pretty excellent. But if you don't have great city states in your continent, then this guy is just average. Uh, Jamsati Tata, I have no idea who this guy is. Uh, blah, blah, blah. He understood company, he could find 100 companies. Wow. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, information era. And. Um, Campus is provides plus 10 tourism. Okay, this is pretty nice if you're going for a cultural victory, obviously. Otherwise, this is completely useless. But if you're going to for cultural victory, this can be pretty nice because chances are you might still have maybe two campus districts. Maybe if you conquer a couple of cities with campus districts, you have three, maybe you have even four. You're not going to have a lot of them if you are playing on Didi because on Didi, you have to prioritize the district that gives you the victory, and that if you're going for tourism, obviously, that's going to be the theater square. So you are not going to be building a lot of campuses, just one or two, to, or maybe three tops to, to get to computers as soon as possible. That's the only use you have for campus on, on cultural victory. Uh, but still, that's plus 20 tourism all of the sudden, if you have two campus. If you have four, that's plus 40 tourism all of the sudden. So that's pretty sweet. 
Um, so I would say try to get him if you're going for a cultural victory. John Jacob Astor, Industrial Era, gained 500 gold and two envoys. So same thing as before with, with this guy, only this time you get more gold, but it's Industrial Era, so you probably have more gold anyway. I would say it's the same thing as Fugger, maybe even, even weaker, although he gives you more gold because late game it, it gets harder and harder to take uh, the suzerain status away from city-states. So these two envoys, uh, I don't know if they're going to make such a big difference later on. Uh, but again, if you're fighting against uh, another civilization for the suzerain status of Toronto or, or some other overpowered city-states, then by all means try to get him. Why not? Rockefeller, modern era. Uh, grant one oil resource, which can be nice, uh, but mm, the units that need oil come a real, little bit late in the game, so it's not super strong. Um, by the time you, you need the oil, I mean, you should already be winning the game. Uh, and then your three loss gain plus two gold for, for each strategic resource improved in the destination city. This is much better than the extra oil. This is the real value of Rockefeller, okay? Late game. Uh, you probably have a lot of trade routes already, maybe something like 10 trade routes already. And this plus 2 uh, can be maybe plus 4 for each trade route, if you're lucky. So that can be plus 40 gold all of a sudden, just for having this guy. That's awesome. That's just, just, just great. So, yeah, that's why Rockefeller is so good, because of the bonus to trade routes. The oil, ah, okay, if the game gets... Um, very long, maybe you want tanks, so okay, this can be relevant, uh, but it's probably not going to be a game changer. I, I think that the, the extra gold from trade routes is really good because at that point you start getting, you know, with this plus 40 you can do things like, I don't know, you build a new industrial zone and then you purchase a workshop in two turns or one turn or something like that. And, and this guy really makes that kind of thing possible because your trade routes become even stronger. John Spilsbury, grants one toys and plus four amenities. So uh, we already had other other guys that were providing luxuries. Now the problem with, with Spilsbury is that he only gives you one copy, so he doesn't give you extra money. That's not so nice because the DDAI can pay you more than 15 gold per turn for one extra luxury, maybe more. Or maybe you can even trade it for another luxury if, if uh, the AI doesn't hate you completely. So um, it's a shame that he doesn't give you one extra resource for trading. Still though, having one extra luxury that you cannot get otherwise, as I said, this is again the difference with Colaeus or those guys. Um, this kind of thing you cannot get otherwise, you can only get him with him. So you're, you're getting one extra luxury for you, you're also stealing one luxury from the AI. That is why these guys that give you one luxury that you cannot get otherwise are, in my opinion, better uh, than, let's say, Colaeus, okay? Uh, so I would say decent, not as good as the guys that give you two copies, obviously, but still decent, okay? I, I wouldn't pass this guy. Levi Strauss grants two jeans, same stuff as before, okay? This guy does give you two, so you get one extra for trading. Uh, so yeah, as you can see, a lot of guys that give you unique luxuries that would not appear otherwise. So chances are in your game, you're always going to get at least one of these luxuries, usually two. I usually get two of these luxuries that only appear through great merchants. And I try to get at least one of those. To get one extra luxury that I cannot get otherwise, for some extra trading, and to take this stuff away from the AI. You don't want to give a unique luxury to the, to the AI. You don't want them to be so strong. This is one luxury, not only one extra luxury they get, it's one luxury that you cannot take away from them. Okay, you cannot conquer the city that has genes. Um, so that's why I don't like letting the AI get these unique luxuries. Marco Polo, medieval era, of course, free trader unit in the city, increases trade route capacity by one, foreign trade routes to the city provide plus two gold to both cities. So to both cities, not so excellent. Still, though, it's nice to have an extra two gold, and uh, I mean, you can send all of your foreign trade routes from this city to get plus two gold from all of them. And if you have, let's say, I don't know, 10 foreign trade routes that gives you plus 20 gold per turn, that is pretty sweet. 
Uh, and the same is basically like the Colossus. Remember the Colossus Wonder, free trader and plus one trade out capacity. And that is good. I already said with the Colossus that it was a good wonder, and I think this guy is a good, great merchant. Uh, trade routes, I always say it, they give you everything, so you always want to have more. Problem is, medieval era. So on Didi, even on Immortal, I think it's very hard to get this. If you're playing below Immortal, go for him, because this is pretty good. Marcus Licinius Crassus, your near city annexes his style into his territory, claims 60 gold. Eh! This is okay. He has three charges. Fine. So in the end, you are going to gain sixty gold very early in the game, and you are going to get three new tiles early in the game. You are probably purchasing tiles, so this might be um, a useful thing to have. Uh, but it's, it's still kind of meh. <laughs> it's still uh, it's not a big deal. And anyway, on Diddy, you are not going to get him. So who cares? Mary Catherine Goddard. Modern era plus one level of diplomatic visibility with all other civilizations. I consider this to be probably the worst great merchant in the whole game. She's awful. I mean, who the hell wants this? If if um, by the time you have embassies, you are going to get all the diplomacy visibility you need with your embassies, or maybe with espionage, or if you really want to use a spy for that, which is probably not the case. I never use my spies for that. But if you really want this, you can get it with a spy. And and if not, as I said, with embassies. And before embassies, you probably wa have enough visibility to more or less deal with diplomacy thanks to the foreign delegations. And uh, this is just useful. Uh, I mean, if diplomacy was a bigger thing in Civ 6, uh, I would consider her more valuable. But the way diplomacy works right now, it's just the diplomatic system is still not... Uh, important enough uh, for the game uh, final results, so forget about her. Uh, I never get her. Masaru Ibuka, information era. Industrial Sound District probably plus Zen Tourism. Again, one thing that you want for cultural victories, you are probably going to have um, several industrial zones, um, maybe two or three for your factories to affect as many cities as possible. And this can be plus 20 tourism or plus 30 tourism or something like that. Um, maybe even plus 40 because industrial zones are always pretty good. So yeah, if you're going for cultural victory, don't don't pass it. If you're not going for cultural victory, this is useless. Melita Bents, Atomic Era, plus 25% tourism rate towards our civilization. You have a trade route two, increased trade route capacity by one. Uh, is this the best great merchant for a touristic victory? I would say probably yes. Uh, if I don't remember, I still have a few to go, but I think this one was the best one for t uh, cultural victory. So if you're going for a cultural victory and you see Melita Benz with this plus 25% tourism towards trade to other civilizations, um, go for her like crazy, buy her, do anything you, you can to get her. Because um, the thing is, if there are, let's say, five other civilizations in the game, okay, that would be a small map. Uh, you can send one trader to each of them, and that is plus 25% tourism rate to uh, to each one of those five civilizations. If there are seven other civilizations, that would be standard size, you get plus 25% to seven civilizations. That is a lot of tourism. That is a lot of extra tourism. This, this woman can really make your cultural victory way faster. So go for her like crazy. Piero de Vardi, Medieval Era, 200 gold, one envoy. Okay, uh, a little bit worse than the guys that give you two envoys, obviously. Uh, comes a little bit earlier, but yeah, this is this is a bit... Ah. You can probably get a few... If you really want envoys, you can probably get some, some city-state quests. So, uh, not a big deal. Below average, I would say. Project Darmal, Renaissance Era, one envoy and your trade routes to your own cities gain plus 0 0.5 gold for each speciality district at the destination. So um, he can make uh, internal trade routes a little bit better. Let's say you have three speciality districts, this is plus 1.5. Uh, mid to late game, you're going to start getting four districts on every city when you get 10 population on every city. That is going to be plus 2 gold for every internal trade route. Problem is, Chances are that in the late game you're not going to get a lot of internal trade routes because 
uh, foreign trade routes tend to be much stronger on the late game. Like internal trade routes are very good when your cities are growing, when you got, want to produce your initial buildings and initial districts faster, when you want to grow your population faster. But late game, you will change your internal trade routes to foreign trade routes because you want to get more gold and so on. So that's why this guy is not super strong, okay? He's still good. I would say this is still a good great merchant. It's just not awesome, okay? Don't don't go crazy for him, but if you can get him, get him. It's, this is nice. This is a nice bonus. It's just not amazing. And obviously, one envoy on top of it. Okay, fine. Sarah, breathe love. Plus 25% tourism to ours. You have a trade route too, so... Same stuff as before, only that Melita Benz give you another trade route. She comes in the Atomic Era. Sara comes in the Modern Era. Okay, so a little bit early, but... Um, a little bit earlier, right? Yeah. Okay, uh, I'm confusing now Modern Era. Oh, sorry, that was a brain fart right here. I'm confusing Modern Era and Atomic Era. Modern comes Amster Industrial, right? Yeah, after industrial and then atomic. Okay, yeah, I was right. Sorry about that. The brain fart. Okay, whatever. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Anyway, uh, so she comes a little bit earlier, but she doesn't give you an additional trade route. Um, still, though, still, still, I know you don't get one extra trade route, but the fact that she comes earlier is pretty strong. So I would say she's as good as Melita. You don't get the extra trade route, but you get this tourism bonus faster, and that is going to get you make you win faster. So, yeah, pretty awesome. If any of this plus 25% tourism rate for foreign trade route appears in the game, you want to get this when you're going for a cultural victory. Zhang Qian, okay. I'm not familiar with this guy, classical era. Okay, some classical era Chinese guy, mm, an officer of the Imperial Guard. Okay, whatever, I will read that later, sorry. Anyway, increases trade route capacity by one, foreign trade routes with city provided plus two gold from both cities. Uh, similar situation to what we had before, on Diddy, Immortal, maybe even Emperor, I don't think you're going to get a classical era great person. Maybe if you play on King difficulty or Prince difficulty, you can get this guy. Uh, well, on Prince for sure maybe on king as well and uh, increase regional capacity by, by one this is always good so if you're playing prince on king by all means get him otherwise uh, forget about uh, classical era people and finally great scientist okay let's go to the final part of this video abdus salam information era triggers eureka moment for all technologies from the information era Okay, now, depending on when you get this guy, he can be pretty strong. If you're going for a science victory, obviously, otherwise he's useless. But if you're going for a science victory, uh, maybe you get him at the beginning of the information era. Because if you're going for a scientific victory, obviously, at this point, you're going to be leading on the great scientist generation because you will have a lot of campus and universities and uh, libraries and so on. So uh, you should be getting this guy, and he, if he appears early, at the very beginning of the information era, uh, this can be pretty strong, because it can give you the Eureka for all the technologies you need for the Mars parts. So it can save you a relevant amount of turns. That being said, the main delay of the scientific victory is production, more than science. So that's why this guy is not like top-notch, okay? He's still a decent, great scientist, so if you can get him, and especially if you see him at the beginning of the information era, go for him. Obviously, if he appears later, it's, he's not going to be relevant. Abu al-Qasim al-Sarawi, medieval era. So, uh, al-Sarawi triggers Eureka moment from one random technology from the medieval renaissance era. Ah, one Eureka for one technology and random one. This is very weak. Wounded units can heal plus 5 HP each turn. Okay, yeah, fine. If you're going for a domination victory, this can be more or less helpful. Not a big deal, though. Uh, passive effect, plus 20 HP healing for the player's unit within one tile. This is completely useless. Uh, he's going to, to be activated in some campus in your civilization. If you go to conquer someone else, you're not going to be within one tile. 
So this is nothing. Uh, a pretty weak, uh, great person in my opinion, one of the weakest. Alan Turing, trigger theory common for computers. This is good for both uh, scientific and of course cultural victory as well because computers gives you a big boost to tourism. And one random technology from the modern era. Um, I would say this guy is stronger actually if you're going for touristic victory, for the cultural victory, rather than the scientific. Because two Eureka moments from the modern era are not so strong if you're going for a scientific victory because you will have a lot of research. So they will save you very, very little time. It's only two Eurekas in the modern era, so the technologies are not so expensive. Uh, but if you're going for cultural victory, you're not producing so much science. So getting the Eureka for computers can be pretty valuable, uh, can really increase the speed of your victory. Uh, still not, not a top-notch great person, I would say average if you're going for cultural victory. Einstein, pretty awesome when you're going for science. Universities provide plus four science, so if you're going for scientific victories, you're going to have a lot of universities and this is a lot of extra science. I mean, if you have like eight universities, which is fairly normal for a scientific victory, you have plus 32 science, that is pretty good, even if you are at 320 science per turn, which is a lot, this is still giving you plus 10%, so yeah, very, very strong. Triggers Eureka moment from one random technology from the modern atomic era, this is just a plus, let's say, a, a weak plus, but this is pretty good. So if you're going for a scientific victory, try to get Einstein, he's very good. Alfred Nobel, I really don't like this guy. Triggers the Eureka moment from one random technology from modern atomic era. As we said before, this is just some, some bonus, a very weak one. Applies 23 great people points towards recruiting all cur current and future great people. Problem is, he comes in the modern era, so at that point, 23 points is very little. It's almost irrelevant. Like, in the late game, uh, let's say you're going for a scientific victory. Late game, you're going to be getting more than 20 great scientist points per turn. So this guy is going to give you less than one turn advantage uh, with this stuff. It's very weak. It's just it's just too weak. You're also probably going to get in, be getting 20 great points uh, of, for engineers as well, which is the stuff you need. So, ah, okay, maybe you get the guy one turn earlier, unless you purchase him, in which case it's it's not a lot of money that you save. Uh, and you're probably going to be purchasing your late, late game great people. So yeah, this is this is just too weak, especially on, on high difficulties when you are going to be purchasing your great people in the uh, late games and in the late game and one turn, uh, that's like saving 100 gold or something like that, which is not a lot of money at that point in the game. He comes too late. If he came in the medieval era, or well, medieval era would be hard to get. If he came in the Renaissance or Industrial Era, he could be better. He could be uh, twice as good, maybe. But right now, uh, ah, no. They should increase this number, I think, to 40 or something like that to make him really good. Aryabhata, Classical Era, so you're not going to get him on, on high difficulties, maybe any, not even on Emperor. Eureka moment for the series of technologies. Classical or medieval era, so those technologies are not going to be expensive. I mean, yes, you're not producing a lot of science here, but we're talking just about three Eurekas, and the technologies you really want, you probably, you're probably you probably going to get the Eurekas anyway yourself, manually, because you can plan ahead. So, yeah, below average. Carl Sagan, Information Era, 3,000 production points of our space race project. Awesome. Awesome. So... This guy gave, basically gives you one Mars part for free, for one turn. And those Mars parts can take easily 10 turns or more. And this, those are the 10 turns that you need to win the game. So maybe the AI is, is getting there as well and you are running for the victory. So this guy can be the difference between winning or losing um, if you are very tight in your game. So he's pretty good. And even if you're not very tight, you know, he can make you win 10 turns earlier. So why the hell not? Who doesn't want to win 10 turns earlier uh, on a science victory that takes so long? I mean, come on. You always want Carl Sagan. Charles Darwin, Industrial Era. 500 science on standard speed for each natural wonder tile here or adjacent. Oh, I forgot to say, this guy is obviously better on epic or marathon speed because uh, production of space race projects is more expensive. Charles Darwin, 
500 science for each natural wonder tile here or adjacent. So, if you have a natural wonder with a lot of tiles, like Galapagos Islands, that by the way give you an achievement if you activate this guy on Galapagos Island. Or if you have the Pantanal, I think the Pantanal is a natural wonder that has uh, the larger amount of tiles, then this guy can be very, very strong. Okay, you can get 2000 science points out of the sudden, which can be a couple of technologies in one turn. That is pretty good. Now, if you don't have Galapagos, if, if you don't have the Pantanal, then maybe you can only get two tiles and you get 1000 science points, then it's not so strong. It's still good or acceptable because you might still get one technology for free. So I wouldn't just pass on him, but uh, he's, it really depends on the map, how good he is. He can be average or he can be great, depending on the map. Dimitri Mendeleev, Industrial Era, triggers Eureka moment for chemistry and one random technology from the Industrial Era. Two Eurekas, uh, I just don't like the guys that give you only Eurekas. I find that if I plan ahead properly, I can get, I can manually get most of the Eurekas that I want, uh, except for one that is, that is one Eureka, I don't remember which one, but, but you need to kill a unit with a Musketman, and I never kill units with Musketman, so I never get that one. But apart from that Eureka, uh, all of the other Eurekas you can get manually. Um, oh, actually, I think it's chemistry. Is it chemistry? Is it chemistry, the one that requires you? Uh, to do that, uh, I can powder print to do something, something. Kill a unit. Oh, come on, which. I know it's not too far from the Muskiman because I know that's one of the reasons. Ah, no, square rigging. Okay. Square rigging, kill a unit with a Muskiman. I never, ever, ever get this boost. If I'm going for it, if I need frigates because I'm on an island map, I will get super rigging before I even get gunpowder. So, <laughs> and if you're, I'm not going for it, then, then yeah, who cares? And I never build a lot of, of musketmen because they're not a good unit. So, anyway, so let's let's go back to what I was talking about. Sorry, guys. Um, yeah, so this guy uh, Mendeleev, he gives you uh, the the Eureka to. Um, Chemistry and one random technology. If that random technology is square rigging and <laughs> you are in an island map, okay, congratulations. You got a very difficult Eureka. But otherwise, this is pretty weak. Emily de Chatelet, Renaissance Era. Triggers Eureka moment from three random technologies. So, hey, two Industrial Era, three Renaissance or Industrial Era. Okay, so you might get Renaissance Eureka that are cheaper, but he comes earlier as well. And there are three Eurekas instead of two, so I guess this is a little bit better because it comes earlier. Still, though, I don't like the guys that give you Eurekas simply because um, early, mid game Eurekas you can usually get manually. Late game Eurekas, there are a lot of um, technologies that don't give you an Eureka manually. You can only get that Eureka through espionage or through great people. So, information era uh, Eurekas are, are much better. Okay, and that is why. That is why this guy can be good if he appears at the beginning of the information era, because technology from the information era, you cannot usually get Eurekas manually, at least not for a lot of them. But Eurekas in the Renaissance, Eurekas in the in the industrial era zone, uh, they're pretty easy to get, so I don't care much for these guys. Erwin Schrödinger, uh, he makes the cat appear live and dead? No. Atomic era. So he's, this guy is good and not good at the same time. He triggers Eureka moment from three random technologies from the Atomic or Information Era. Uh, yeah, no, he's just bad. Sorry. No, well, actually, no. This Information Era, okay, and you get him in the Atomic Era. So he can be good if you get the Eurekas for technologies that you could not get the Eureka manually. Okay? On the contrary, if you get Eurekas on technologies, if you are unlucky because this is random, so, uh, yeah, random. So if, if you get the Eurekas for technologies that you could get the Eureka manually, then this guy is suddenly not so good. So I guess, yeah, he's good and bad at the same time. Awesome. That, that works great. Euclid. Classical era. Triggers a Eureka moment for mathematics and one random technology from the medieval era. Uh, pff, 
Okay, Eureka's again. They, they didn't really uh, use too much imagination for the great scientists. A lot of them just give you Eureka's. And Eureka's, uh, the Eureka from mathematics, I almost always get it manually. You just need three different districts. Uh, by the time you want it, you probably already have uh, one commercial hub, uh, one campus and one harbor, or maybe one industrial zone. So, yeah, I almost always get this stuff manually. Uh, and one random technology from the medieval era, yeah, whatever. If I want the technology from the medieval era, I will get the, the Eureka manually. So, eh, and also classical era, so you're not going to get this guy anyway on any high difficulty. Galileo, Renaissance era, 250 science for each adjacent mountain tile. So, this is, I think, it's less science than Darwin, but the thing is, you can almost always get a good tile with, at the very least, three mountain tiles. So, at the very least, you're going to get 750. I can usually, in most of my maps, find one tile with four or five uh, mountain tiles. So, it can give me 1,000 or 1,250 science points. Renaissance era, so he comes earlier than Darwin. And so, that, that amount of, of science, 1,000, maybe, uh, will give you a bunch of technologies at that point in the game, um, at least a couple of technologies at that time in the game. So overall, I think um, if you don't have Pantanal or if you don't have Galapagos Island, Galileo will be better than Darwin. If you have Pantanal, then Darwin is definitely better, but otherwise I think Galileo can be better than Darwin, simply because he comes earlier and you can almost always get at least 1,000 science, point, science points. So, so yeah, still a very similar uh, great person. As I said, they just they didn't really <laughs> think much about these bonuses. Hildegard of Bingen, or however this is pronounced, sorry. Um, medieval era. Holy side history feature agency bonus provides science as well. Okay, this is stupid. This is just stupid. This is, you don't need this. Why you don't need this? Um, if you want, uh, if you're building your holy sites for a lot of faith adjacency, um, you don't need the science because you are going for a religious victory. If you are going for a scientific victory, you don't build holy sites. Not one of them. You are not going to need one single holy site. So they are a bit contradictory, these two things. 100 face points, obviously very little and, and obviously irrelevant. Uh, the only situation that I can think of in which this great person can be good is if you are going for a scientific victory, but on the early game you conquered um, several cities from the AI and all of them had holy sites which sometimes happens because the AI uh, builds holy sites they prioritize holy sites way too much so if you if you get an early war you might get like three or four holy sites and maybe maybe all of them are next to mountains so you might be getting some nice extra amount of science pretty early in the game and so it could be good so if you did conquer holy sites on your on a game in you which you want to go for a scientific victory, then okay, she's good. But that is the only only type of situation in which she's good. In any other game, she's useless. So I guess at least 90% of the games she's useless. Ipatia instantly builds a library in this district. Liber library is probably plus one science. Classical era, so high difficulties, you are simply not going to get her. Low difficulties, yeah, okay, one free library is almost nothing. One plus one science from every library, if you're going for a scientif scientific victory, is all right. Uh, but anyway, you're not going to get her on high difficulties. Renaissance era, Isaac Newton instantly builds university and library, so obviously better because universities are much more expensive. And universities provides, provide plus two science, so I already said that Einstein is good with the plus four science. Isaac Newton comes earlier, and he's already giving you plus two. So yeah, get him, get him. He's very strong for scientific victories, plus two science from each university so early in the game. James Young, Industrial Era, reveals soil without the normal technology requirement triggers Eureka for two random technologies from the industrial or modern era. So another guy that gives you oil, just like Rockefeller did. 
Uh, no, sorry, he doesn't give you oil. He reveals oil. Okay, <laughs> that's just stupid. Uh, I mean, it can help you plan your mid-game war or your mid-game expansion if there is still room for expansion. Like you see oil before anyone else and you think, oh, I, I need oil, I don't have any in my land. I know that I'm going to want oil eventually in the late game because I'm going for a late game domination, victory, whatever. And so you send a settler and you build a city there. Or you plan who are you going to attack based on that. So, okay, but uh, otherwise it's, it's pretty useless. Uh, to Eurekas, whatever, you already know what I think about Eurekas. Janaki Amal, 400 science furniture in forest style. Uh, I would say stronger than both Galileo and Darwin. 400 is very good, and you can usually get at least four rainforest styles altogether, so I usually get at least 1600 science points with this guy, which is quite a lot. Comes a little bit late though, but it can still be one free technology at that point, which is pretty nice. Um, yeah, if he didn't come so late, he would be amazing, like one of the best great people in the game. Because he comes a little bit late, he's not so awesome, but still pretty good. Mary Leakey, artifacts in your cities. Okay, so this is just for touristic victories, obviously, if you're going for cultural victories. Uh, great, great scientist, if you're not going for cultural victories, uh, this is useless because you're not going to be getting any artifact. Omar Kayam, Eureka for two random technologies, inspiration moment from one random civic. Okay. Eureka, inspiration, etc. etc. Uh, on the medieval era it's very hard to get a great scientist and you don't want to waste those great scientist points on this kind of thing. I, I wouldn't use him. Finally my personal favorite for scientific victories, Stephanie Kwalek plus 100% production towards space race projects. So you get this usually with engineers. She's the only scientist that gives you this stuff. So if you see her in the game on the information era, by all means, purchase her, get her as soon as possible. She's going to save you a lot of turns in your victories. She is the best great scientist for space victories, no doubt at all. And that's it guys, that is the Great People Guide, I hope you like it, if you want any other strategy guide on this channel, request it in the comment section and I will try to build it, and that's it, thank you for watching.